All right, let's go ahead and take a look now at uh, inverse trig functions and some integration. So there's two formulas, and I know they're, you know, kind of uh, a lot going on here, but two formulas you really do need to memorize. Basically, if you see something in this form right here, um, then the antiderivative of that is inverse sine of u over a plus c. I know that looks kind of crazy, but the way that you can, I guess, prove that, basically, you know, it works that um, if... if if this is the antiderivative of this, that means if you take the derivative of this inverse sine using the formula for the derivatives and you were to simplify it, this is what you would get over here. So it's basically, that's how they made this connection is, okay, well they realize that the derivative of this is equal to that, so therefore the antiderivative of this is equal to this over here. Um, and same thing with the tangent one as well, okay, so you have um, something in this format, the integral would be that. So for instance, let's say you had an integral that looked like this, the integral of 1 over square root of 9 minus x squared dx, okay? Now, this integral right here would not be able to be accomplished by any of the prior, you know, um, techniques we've learned. Um, u sub, I mean, u sub wouldn't work because if you let u equal 9 minus x squared, the derivative that's negative 2x, well, there's no x to cancel out anywhere, so it wouldn't work out. And there's just, you know, it wouldn't be a, a natural log one or anything else. So in this case, um, we would be using our inverse trig, okay? And, you know, between the two of these, you can clearly see it's got to be this one up here because of the square root going on. So what, um, what you should do when you get to a problem like this and you realize that it's the inverse trig, in this case inverse sine, um, which first identify what your a and your u are in your problem. So a is always a constant and u is a variable. So in our case right here, like the 9 is referring to that is what a squared is. So if a squared is equal to 9, that means that a is equal to 3, since 3 squared is equal to 9. And u would be equal to x, okay? Since, you know, you, if you square that, it's just x squared, okay? So then the one thing that we need to check is this du on top basically is whatever u is equal to, let's find the derivative of that. So in this case, the derivative of that is equal to, um, you know, I'm just writing u as the derivative of u. The derivative of uh, x is, is 1, and a lot of times we write dx, okay? So basically what you're checking is that this du is, is on top right here. <clears throat> and in this case, it's perfectly set up for us. The 1 is on top, so you know, it works out as is. There's no adjustments that need to be made, as you'll see sometimes you'll have to do in a second. This is set up perfectly, okay? So again, the du, which is 1, is right on top. And I have a dx there, but I can just move the dx up on top of that 1. So we're set up perfectly. And so therefore, what we can do here is we can just take and plug into our formula. So we have inverse sine of u, which is equal to x, over 3, which is, you know, a, so it's going to be x over 3 plus c. Don't forget that plus c. 